What if your next colleague wasn't human? What if they joined your meetings, remembered last week, captured your action items, and even suggested who should do what, all without being asked? What would happen if they listened in passively into all your conversations? I mean, would you even like that? Does that creep you out a little bit? Keep watching to find out more. Hey friends, I'm Ahmed. I help professionals deliver AI that works. Here's what we're covering in this week's AI news for delivery professionals. What is Proactor and which is being billed as the world's first proactive AI teammate? We explain what this means and we'll take a look at exactly what the impact of this is on AI delivery and specifically which areas of the AI delivery lifecycle are most impacted and what to do about it. So what's actually happened? So Proactor has been called the first truly autonomous AI meeting assistant. Now, unlike Copilot and ChatGPT, it doesn't wait to be prompted. It joins meetings on its own, listen to every speaker and delivers real-time transcriptions, summaries of what matters, action items as they happen, assignments without needing to be told, and even has persistent memory of past conversations. It can even do on-the-fly research whilst you're in the meeting when something new comes up and in short, it acts kind of like a silent, proactive team member and not a tool. Now also, as already indicated, it's agentic, which means once it's integrated, it acts on things. So if you say, let's turn this issue into an ADO or a ServiceNow ticket, boom, there it is. Let's schedule a meeting with ABC for the first available slot in the calendar. That's done, and the summary dropped in the chat. What's more, when an action is given, it will even chase up an individual automatically to make sure that they have not forgotten and given it the right priority. I mean, it nudges the right people without anyone requesting it. Now, apparently it has something called global context perception, which means that what was decided last month, which action items were due from where, and even the reason that led to a choice, did you decide to accept the risk at the quarterly planning meeting and why? So that can be resurfaced at the right time. So and you can look back at that and you can say, why did we accept that risk again? I mean, which idiot accept? Oh, damn, that's me, right? So I can imagine <laughs> a lot of problems coming up over here and I think we're all gonna have to sharpen up. You see, the memory stack is persistent and so it spans multiple sessions and doesn't forget. So let's just say you're in a dev stand-up and Proactor labels every speaker, inserts timestamps, and even a module, let's just say if a module needs testing, a separate channel opens up with a sample test plan already created. If it links in with your GitHub Copilot, for example, equivalent, it may, able, it may even be able to create your code on the fly whilst you're talking about it in the stand-up. I mean, it's kind of crazy, pretty crazy stuff, right? And also, as I said, it stores cross-meeting information context, but it does that in a searchable knowledge base. So weeks later, you can search for a specific action or a specific conversation and you can access it. Anyway, this hasn't been released yet. So will the real product live up to the hype? Well, that's kind of unclear, but the idea is unmistakable. Anyway, so that's around the corner. Exciting, scary, well, let's have a look now and see how this affects you and real-world AI delivery. So if you have a look at the chart, you can see the eight different areas in AI delivery. As you know, every news item, we have a ask ourselves, how does this impact each of these different uh, eight areas? And what, which are the top three that you think are impacted? I'll give you a moment to have a think about that. Right. Okay, so now you've done that, let me show you what I think are the three areas that are most impacted. And the first one is a governance, risk, and compliance area number two. So that's kind of obvious, right? Because Proact is always on, and its present and persistent memory raise urgent questions about consent, auditability, and control over the autonomous decisions that it may or may not be making. Then we've got area number six, which is the people, skills, roles, and organization. And delivery teams need to evolve to work alongside AI. This has got 
big implications in terms of what roles may be um, needed, as well as team dynamics and human agent uh, collaboration, right? And I can really see conflict risks that we're going to talk about in a minute. And lastly, but certainly not least, is area which is post live operating model. Because with Proactor continuously monitoring your deployment and what's live, teams are going to need to think about how they're going to be um, governing its behavior and ushering a need for agent ops discipline as well. So let's have a look at each of these three different areas, starting with the GRC area number two. So as I said, you're always being recorded. So what happens if in the middle of the meeting, I've had this loads of times, I'm in a meeting and I'm having a private kind of conversation with my other colleagues and it, and it turns a little bit personal because we've built that rapport and that understanding. And that's now being recorded mid-meeting. Could be a nightmare, right? Memory as a risk. What happens if you accept a risk or make a decision six weeks or six months ago? It turns out to be a bad one. It's going to happen, right? We're all going to make bad decisions. Now you're in the spotlight and they've got full information on everything, but we've now got the benefit of hindsight. How do humans deal with that? That's a good question, right? And then finally, we've got invisible decisions. We're going to, we're going to need to be really careful about the invisible decisions that are made by these kind of agents. Because as decisions could be made where the agent starts to make these on its own, and actually it should have had a human in a loop, that can cause real issues. Moving on to area six, people. I can honestly really see a real conflict happening between people here with a persistent memory. Humans forget, they're fallible, they make mistakes. How do we behave when a bright light is shone on that? The next one is an agent facilitator. We're going to need somebody to keep an eye on this agent as well and advise how to behave and tweak its behavior. And gen generally, all of this is going to result in a power shift from humans to AI over time. And so this is also something we're going to need to think about it. Right. Now, moving on to the post live operating model. This is acting in the background. So imagine you've got this P1 or whatever. It calls an emergency meeting automatically with only the relevant people, provides you, gets the data before the meeting by interacting with the right agents and then working in the background whilst you're discussing and diagnosing. It calls your GitHub Copilot agent, works out a diagnosis, puts a fix in. You have a look at that whilst you're discussing. Say, yeah, that looks about all right. Calls your release agent, bang, the fix is in live. And I know I'm probably simplifying it, but effectively, you can see this happening in the future, okay? Problem is, this actually does take us on to the next point, which is operational risk. This brings a lot of risk, obviously. Where's the acceptable line between what you want it to do, allow it to do? You'll have to draw that line really carefully, which brings me on to my third and final point, the, at the beginning of the agent ops era. Just as we built site reliability and engineering practices for human operated systems, we now need agent ops for autonomous AI agents like Proactor to ensure they act reliably, safely, and within controlled boundaries post-launch. Okay, so here's a question for you. Imagine every word you uttered was recorded. You had a private conversation during a meeting with a colleague, and that was retained in persistent memory for all of your colleagues to find out. How would you feel about that? Okay. In summary, Proact is around the corner, and the real question is whether your delivery model is ready for autonomous teammates. And this isn't just about automation, it's about delegation. And that changes everything about how we govern, collaborate, and operate after going live. Working with AI is no longer about just using tools. It's about partnering with the agents and deciding who's really in charge, from task support to orchestration, Agentic AI is moving really fast and delivery leaders need to act now to shape its role or risk reacting to its consequences. This is where delivery becomes intelligent, not just in what we build, but in how we build it, how we ship it and how we live with it every day. The question is, if I act like a teammate that never sleeps, never forgets, and never asks permission, am I still just a tool? So I hope you find that useful.
And if you care about getting AI delivery right, not just pushing models, but landing real responsible solutions, I cover the real world AI news and what they mean for AI delivery teams every Monday. So please subscribe so that you get these new videos as soon as they're released and share this video with your team if you found it useful. Take care and goodbye.